it's important that I just put myself 100%, apply myself and represent, you know, the young black male, whatever I do. More importantly that than, you know, let's get something real meaty, real political. I really just want to put myself, make, make myself being political by having my principles, living by my principles, and, and applying myself to today's society. What do you want from me? Yeah. Think you kind of fly. You can see it in one scene when I'm down there with the equipment, those were real tears. As soon as they, I started tapping there, it was like it could come up every time. Because just, I know how important the music can be to the getting, getting over and getting along in your life. I know how the music can heal people's soul. It can, it can be the difference between life and death. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. What do you think about all this attention? It's funny. <laughs> Daddy <laughs> know me a little while ago. Money after work? She's seen more money in her life than she ever had. Each job I, I take, I feel like it's different than the last one. Each character is different than the last one. Each movie is different than the last one. There's no comparison. It gives me a certain amount of freedom in my music, bit in the music that I do, and just in general as a young black male to have, you know, the opportunity to do movies where I can get money and, you know, get in a, a certain spot in white Hollywood. I don't think I have fans. I think they like it. My friends, you know, people that can relate to it. They feel like when they see me in the role, it's gonna be real. They feel like if Tupac's name is in it, it's gonna be a real movie. I'm gonna be real. No matter what, it's gonna be real, authentic. He do that, cause uh, if you don't, me and you gonna have problems. You understand? You could be one kind of an artist, and you could be another kind of an artist. I want to be an exceptional artist, and I want to be here for the longevity. You know, I want to be when it's over. I want it to be more than just for the beats and the bass lines. I want it to be for something. I want to stand for something. You know, I don't want to be just a regular statistic. You know what I'm saying? I want I want to break the mold. So while everybody's saying how they can't do it, I want to do it. And then when I do it, watch everybody do it. Then I go back to thugging fully again, you know what I'm saying? But right now, I'm a show. I'm, I'm listening to what everybody's saying. What It seems like the whole country is saying. Everybody is losing people. Everybody's at the cemetery. You know what I'm saying? That's where you can do your best business. So I want to see what I could do to change it. And if I can't, and if it don't work, then, you know, I'll go another route. But this is just one thing I want to try. So I got a song called Me Against the World. It's perfect for all this. Perfect. Me Against the World. It's just... Got nothing to lose, it's just me against the world. The message I stress to make it stop, study your lessons, don't settle for less. Even the genius asks us questions, be grateful for blessings. Don't ever change, keep your essence. I've never wanted to be a gangster, I'm a thug. But I'm a nice person, I'm, I'm a thug by survival. I have to be to survive, not because I want to be. I don't want to hurt nobody, you know what I'm saying? I want to be, I want to survive, I want to make money, I want to be in business, I want to do it. But what's honest about the world is that no one's going to let me do that. So that's where the thug comes in. But, if everybody just left me alone, I'd be a nice person. You ever feel like your luck's running out, man? I mean... <laughs> Lately, I've been feeling like my luck's been running out. A lot of people have mm -hmm. an image about you. Mm -hmm. What would you like them to know about you in 1996, Tupac now? That I'm a Gemini. <laughs> <laughs> me being a Gemini, I am... I am the classic case of a Gemini, you know what I mean? No, what does well, that mean? I, it means that I'm quiet, I could be calm, quiet, and very into my work, and totally focused, and totally disciplined, and um, boring, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Or, I could be fun, 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 but dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Not only to other people, but to myself. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, I'm like a kid in a candy store. All of this is new, I'm 25, you know what I mean? And it's like, got cash, everything you dreamed of, and they've held me back in so many other circumstances that now it's your time to go, and it's, it's kind of hard, difficult to keep yourself from just pressing the gas down all the way. Basically, just taking my time and thinking and analyzing situations and trying to think before I do things. I'm very passionate, Gemini's, you know, me and Prince, we Gemini, we I passionate. like that. And how do you deal with the pressures? You see it. You see it on the news all the time, how I deal with it. I deal with it like, um, I, I think any human being would deal with it. It's like, people can tell you, you know, don't do this or don't do that, but my, my whole mind state is that if we don't ever go outside of the boundaries, we will never 
change anything. We will never begin anything. We will never start anything. We'll just keep talking about the people who did it once and told us not to go outside the thing. That's just like them telling Christopher Columbus that the world is flat. You know what I mean? I'm doing the same thing. They're telling me you can't do this. You can only rap. And if you rap, you can only rap about this. And then you can you can't act. And if you act, you can only do the black films. And you know you can't be a, a rap. You can't be an artist or a celebrity and go out still. And you can't be an artist and still have fun and still be true. I don't like that. So I try to go outside the boundaries. Sometimes it's effective and it's positive. Sometimes it's negative and it blows up in my face. My five mistakes were on the news. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Everybody has five mistakes they did. Maybe three. Maybe four. I've done about five things that are questionable. Things that I, you know I should not have done. But now. Now it's just like the Reebok effect. I, I do one thing and it comes out three times. I can never change how people see me. I can only try to be better at what I do so that when they do blow it up, it's you know it doesn't look as bad. I don't know if I've changed, I've just grown. You know what I mean? I might still make the same mistakes, but it'll be something different about it. Because I learn from every time I fall on my on my behind. I learn on like, you know, there's something there, watch out for the banana peel and the floor is slippery. But you still don't know everything. Like I might know not to walk on the floor because I might slip, but I don't know not to touch the electric socket and I get shocked, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So the only way you can learn is hands-on, you know, and sometimes that's shocking and it hurts, but sometimes you put your hand on something good like money or, you know, gold or a reward or an album or some good material or a good movie from taking that same chance that got you in trouble. Life is funny, ain't it? <laughs> Somehow I don't think this was my parents' dream for me. So why did you decide to do this movie? What did you like about it? To help change. <laughs> To help change my image, really. <laughs> Number one, this movie is really about friendship and what unconditional friendship means. And I did it basically because it was funny and I've never got to really be funny. Now that I'm, I mean, I might not be funny this time funny? either. I'm, I got a couple jokes. You I got, got a couple jokes. jokes. I met Eddie Griffin one time, Chris Tucker. I met them, they gave me a joke each. I carry a joke with me. So I got, you know, but after two, I got to go get some new material. <laughs> So are you gonna do a romantic comedy anytime soon? Are we gonna see Tupac yes. serenading a girl? No doubt. Working on my little production company, a movie production company. We got a lot of, a lot of good things happening. So I'm just, if I say it right now, the way my luck has been going, it'll all fall through. But if I said it, you go, oh, that's really nice. But just give me a month, just so I can lock it down. Then I tell everybody. But it's good stuff. I just want to push the envelope and work, work, work. I want to move further away from the music and go start weaning myself into the acting more. In LA we wear chucks, not ballets. Yeah, that's right. Just in locs and khaki suits and ride is what we do. Flossing but half caution, we collide with other fruits. The album that's out now is just my emotion. It's emotional, but it's not thought provoking. Mm -hmm. So I want to do some thought provoking work with my music. And I can do that if I'm working in the films because I grow and learn more things and have more to talk about. But mm -hmm. if you in jail and you get chased by the police, it's, it's like I haven't gone anywhere from the block because I'm still <laughs> talking about the same things. You right. know what I mean? Right. So the music reflects that. So first I got to move out of the environment and then I have other things to write about. What is this? I'm trying to bring back 1989. I was poor in 1989. You know, I was in jail. so. Now we out trying to show prosperity and hope in the future.